From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Welcome to Bayou Wild. We're here at Morton Seafood Restaurant in Madisonville, Louisiana, on the banks of the Chifuncta River. Martha Spencer along with Don Dubuque. Do you know what carp are? Sure. There's a lot of different kinds of carp. Have you ever eaten them? I have. Me too. And they're actually not bad. We're going to delve into them. Certain ones are good. They don't serve them here at Morton's yet, but we're going to let you meet a fella. It's his mission in life to do actually a couple of things with the silver carp. Yes. One, stop an invasive species spread, which is causing some problems here in our habitat. And two, provide a lot of recreation and also some commercial use for a really good fish. If you look at the scenario last past probably 20 years, the government went on and, and spent hundreds of millions in science research, tried to eradicate. Most fish are from Canada all the way down to our bayou, the back wood of our back wood. You can't eradicate most fish. So the transparent thing to do in the most common sense to everyone is you put a value on these fish, and I guarantee you that the, the kunas from down the south and the redneck all the way up there to the Canadian border, they're going to go after it. That's simple than that. You, you got to be able to harvest those fish and by efficient harvest, you will reduce the population so they can coexist with all the native fish. Coming up later, we do our part to stop the invasive silverfin carp. They're not easy to catch. In fact, you really can't catch them on rod and reel. So we're gonna show you how you can harvest them and what to do with them all coming up. Call it what you want, carp, silverfin, but it is delicious, white, flaky, Harvested fish from the wild, and it is delicious. Great for football tailgating. It is clean meat, and it's delicious. By efficient harvest, you will reduce the population so they can coexist with all the native fish. So they are no threat anymore. That's going to take a while, but this is really the only solution that I see. We utilize all these four fish and we combine them in a nice, delicious fish cake that we put on the market. And these are the kind of activities that's going to work. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. Enriched with tradition. A taste that's savory. Crispy. And a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D, where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bugaloosa from anywhere. Double D. For those who've traveled the rivers and bayous along the Mississippi, a sight like this could be familiar. And no, those aren't mullet but rather Asian carp, most famous for their aerial presence in freshwater rivers and lakes. Be ready for an experience here, my friend. Asian carp have been farmed and harvested in China for over a thousand years, serving as an ancient food staple in several parts of Asia. But in North America, the growing presence of the species is a nuisance. Thank you. 
Most sources suggest Asian carp were brought to North America in the 1970s and were introduced to Arkansas commercial fish farms and even sewage containment ponds to control the growth of algae. Flooding of the Mississippi River and its tributaries led to the opportunity for carp to spread from contained ponds into natural waterways and from there the species has exploded. Over the last five, six years, they've, the uh, population has grown dramatically. Uh, I mean, you went from catching 100 pounds a day to, I went out one day and had 17,000 pounds, just in one day of fishing. Asian carp is a collective term that mainly refers to four different carp species. The grass carp, the big head carp, the silver carp, and the black carp. These non-native fish have escaped controlled pond environments and now inhabit waterways across the Mississippi River Basin, most recently being found as far north as the Great Lakes and in the south along bayous and brackish marshes. These silverfin, also known as Asian carp, are a serious threat to our other species. I knew that they were 10, 20 pounds, but I didn't know that that was the small end of them. Um, speaking with these guys, they said they've caught some up to 100 pounds, which is kind of concerning when you figure how much they're eating. So they're eating and breeding uh, tremendously, and the fact that they can get so big. Here, a 30-pound carp is just a growing fish. But there is one Louisianian on a mission to combat the threat with a viable solution. I was doing a, a food segment, uh, um, a cooking segment for the Food Network called uh, Extreme Cuisine, and they wanted a, um, a alligator gall. <laughs> So I hired these guys out of Pierreport to go get an alligator gar, and I went with them because I wanted to see how they catch them. And on the way to go to uh, um, catch the alligator gar, we were at the Duan Landing. We crossed the Atchafalaya, Atchafalaya River, and fish started jumping, and two of them jumped right into by my feet on the boat. And they were 30 pounds apiece. So I had two choices that day. I could throw them back over, or I could say, what the hell? is about this. Why isn't it somebody is doing anything about trying to consume those fish? So I took those fish in the IHS, called down the Buke actually at that time, and he said they surely, I will never forget that quote, they surely jump in the wrong boat. <laughs> he said that. So 10 years later we're working at it, uh, you know, uh, Don and I, and we still, uh, um, you know, we've done a lot of work. We, we, we process the fish now. We have a platform to, to really uh, process uh, millions of pounds of those fish a week. And, uh, and that's what needs to be done. And now we're on the, on the marketing phase of selling the product. Over the past decade, Chef Philippe Parola has dedicated countless hours of time and research into creating a market for Asian carp in a campaign he calls, if you can't beat them, eat them. If, if you look at the scenario last past probably 20 years, the government went on and, and spent hundreds of millions in science research, tried to eradicate. Those fish are from Canada all the way down to our bayou, the back wood of our back wood. You can't eradicate those fish. So the transparent thing to do and the most common sense to everyone is you put a value on these fish, and I guarantee you that the, the kunas from down the south and the redneck all the way up there to the Canadian border, they're gonna go after it. That's simple than that. You, you got to be able to harvest those fish and by efficient harvest, you will reduce the population so they can coexist with all the native fish. Coming up next. It's definitely the strangest form of fishing I've done, but given the problem with the nuisance of these fish, it was pretty fun. They, they definitely have to get a demand for them because the, the uh, sports are not catching uh, no bass no more. They're not catching white perch no more. And uh, we've had other lakes the way we've Went in there and cleaned the carp out of them, and now it's the best fishing they had, pole fishing in five, six years now, just over that, us pulling them fish out. Holy crap! I've got to take a picture with this fish. It's a dinosaur. We went in search of silver carp. This guy did too. Don't miss it. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. 
It's the food. Ross's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. If you hunt or fish, you really need to check out 20echo.com. It's an app that you can take on the water or on the hunt. It logs all the information. It's got the date, the GPS location, tons of information to log your catch or kill. It's a great thing to have. Check it out at 20echo.com, and you'll see it more on Bayou Wild TV. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because, guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, pour and boil for great crawfish every time. Over the past decade, Chef Philippe Parola has dedicated countless hours of time and research into creating a market for Asian carp. If you look at the scenario last past probably 20 years, the government went on and, and spent hundreds of millions in science research, tried to eradicate. Most fish are from Canada all the way down to our bayou, the back wood of our back wood. You can't eradicate those fish. So the transparent things to do in the most common sense to everyone is you put a value on these fish, and I guarantee you that the, the kunas from down the south and the redneck all the way up there to the Canadian border, they're gonna go after it. The abundance of Asian carp in North American waterways and their acrobatic characteristics has led to some interesting ways for fishermen to catch the fish. Have you ever carp fish with a spear? <laughs> Have you ever carp fish with a dip net while water skiing? Or what about with bow and arrow? We wouldn't suggest fishing with a sword, but someone has tried it. A flying carp could even be a target for a boomerang. But no matter your fishing creativity, building a market for Asian carp is the mission of Chef Philippe Parola and commercial use of hoop nets and gill nets is the best way to harvest the fish in numbers. Find the big schools and wrap them up with gill nets, run around and pick them up. We don't leave no net to where the fish drown or anything. And our webbing is a big size to where you don't, you don't catch no game fish. Uh, the fish is gonna have to be really 15 pounds up for us to catch them. It's gonna have to be a big fish. So we don't, we don't catch game fish or nothing like that in these nets. Uh, the fact that we catch the bigger fish uh, we don't kill anything, we don't drag anything smaller, so all the bath and all the things, uh, you know, they'll skip out, so it's a very uh, eco-friendly uh, way to catch most fish. It's definitely the strangest form of fishing I've done, but given the problem with the nuisance of these fish, it was pretty fun. If they were a little bit thicker, we could have shot at them a little bit more, certainly, and I definitely think there is a, uh, a sport in that. People go bow fishing all the time, so you could definitely do that with these two. They'd be flying, but we couldn't get close enough to them today, but they're actually extremely smart fish. They know how to jump over the net and swim around them, so it's uh, easy to see why they're thriving. Controlling the population is also a proven method to improving freshwater game areas. The primary food source for Asian carp is plankton, which makes it a direct competitor for popular bait fish like minnows and shad. They definitely have to get a demand for them because the, the uh, sports are not catching uh, no bass no more. They're not catching white perch no more. And uh, we've had other lakes to where we've went in there and cleaned the carp out of them. And now it's the best fishing they had pole fishing in five, six years now, just over that us pulling them fish out. But all fun and games aside, the truth is a 30 plus pound flying carp can be dangerous to boaters. So if you locate a school, make sure to slow your boat to an idle speed. <laughs> Another reason Asian carp population spread in such rapid numbers is due to the fact that because of the size, they have very few natural predators.
burning them on the... That thing weighs as much as I do. <laughs> that, that's going to be found. Holy yeah. moly. <laughs> wow. It's a dinosaur. We went in search of silver carp. This guy did too. I mean, to see a fish that's as big as me in fresh water kind of blows my mind. I've seen them, you know, 30 pounds, but I've never seen one that contests with what I weigh, so that was kind of neat. Coming up next, Chef Philippe is out to prove that despite popular belief, Asian carp is not a trash fish. By efficient harvest, you will reduce the population so they can coexist with all the native fish. So they are no threat anymore. That's going to take a while, but this is really the only solution that I see. We utilize all these four fish and we combine them in a nice delicious fish cake that we put on the market. And these are the kind of activities that's going to work. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Find out if alternative treatment is the answer to your pet's health issues. Contact Dr. G at VetNaturally.com. Have you ever heard of silverfin? Silverfin is the new name for Asian carp, which is the focus of Chef Parola's campaign to eat the problem. By efficient harvest, you will reduce the population so they can coexist with all the native fish. So they are no threat anymore. That's going to take a while, but this is really the only solution that I see. We utilize all these four fish and we combine them in a nice delicious fish cake that we put on the market. And these are the kind of activities that's going to work. Chef Philippe is no stranger to coming up with tasty recipes for unconventional food items. Browsing his website, can'tbeatemeatem.com, you'll find a variety of recipes ranging from wild boar to dandelion, kudzu, snakehead fish, and of course, nutria. I think that uh, the, the nutria uh, era, which was probably 18 years ago or so, Don, uh, that was something that was very uh, challenging because of the look of the, of the beast. And, but we succeeded, and there's one thing to be said. Um, many chefs got on board. Uh, it was in grocery store, Nutria sausages and uh, Nutria smoke out at hind saddle, but we could not go across the state line because it was not USDA approved. And to get USDA approved, they have to, <laughs> the trapper has to bring the Nutria alive to a slaughterhouse, being slaughtered in front of an USDA inspector. <laughs> we couldn't do that, it was impossible. But what we did throughout these three to four years we send a message to a lot of our folks in Louisiana. Nutria is good to eat, play on a barbecue pit, use recipes, and today, you don't have no much problem with Nutria. You don't hear them creating much problem because a lot of people are there putting those Nutria when they catch them on the barbecue pit, and that's a fact. This is just incredible. It's tender, it's good, very flavorful, and it is a meal. Remember, if you can't beat them, eat them. And much like Nutria, convincing people that Asian carp meat is something edible is no easy task. It takes marketing, and these species are not easy. There is no guidelines, there is no curriculum, there is no book that will tell you how to process and how to market uh, the uh, invasive uh, uh, fish species or any invasive species. So what we have to do is to A, come up with a product that suits 
the food marketplaces that customer will like. That's number one ingredient. They have to be a quality product. Then after that, when you get that done, the economics have to work, you know, because the fisherman is going to have to get paid. The whole process needs to be covered, expenses need to be covered, and that business needs to be a business, need to make money. So, and the, the, the third thing, uh, uh, literally, is to have a convenient use on the product. Marketing, marketing is the answer. You have to be able to, to find the right way to market such product, that people embrace it, understand the story, understand the product, and understand that it, when they eat a product like this, they're gonna be able to salvage the ecosystem and, and, and natural habitat for aquatic species, for sure. Another challenge for marketing silverfin meat is processing, but Chef Philippe has honed in the best method for separating the meat from the bones. Well, I'll tell you what, the best reaction to all my customers that so far have tried the fish, including me, is crab cake. It really, it really looks like, tastes like a crab cake. It's, it's, the, the meat is very white, it's uh, kind of sweetened somewhat, and uh, it's really a very good, good fish to eat. The problem is the bones, you know, the fish itself don't have no value. So you have to be able to remove the bones and have a product boneless for the American public. You can call it what you want, carp, silver fin, but it is delicious, white, flaky, harvested fish from the wild, and it is delicious. Great for football, tailgating, it is clean meat, and it's delicious. Asian carp is safe to eat and healthy. It's a white, flaky fish, high in protein and low in fat. It's extremely healthy. I mean, uh, uh, vitamin B12 and the omega-3, they, they get it all. I mean, it's a wild-caught fish, kind of similar to a salmon wild-caught. Uh, any wild-caught fish are very healthy for you, that's for sure. I mean, this is the most healthy fish there is. Again, it's a plankton uh, feeder, so it, it, it eats microorganisms, so it don't get any aftertaste. The bigger, the better, actually. The whole entire Mississippi Basin is a farm of those fish. And what we're doing, we are always a 10 pound and up. And then the rest of it will grow again, again, and again. So you will never run out of those fish. Once again, you harvest those fish, minimize the threat. Chef Philippe encourages everyone to try Silverfin Cakes through his website, silverfin.us. It, it is definitely available. Uh, we have an online site on silverfin.us. Um, you go out there, click it, and you deliver it to your doorstep. That's the very first time done that an invasive species is available, processed, you know, and available for consumers to try out with not doing anything, no cleanup, no, you know, no, uh, none of that. So uh, we had that online. It's the very first time. We just started a couple of weeks ago. Um, a few restaurants are using it also. Uh, it's served in a few universities uh, as well. So we're trying to, to definitely get a market for those type of product, but uh, it's going to take a while. And we believe by next year, uh, if the government step in, for instance, and give us a food contract because they can do that, that would be the, the, the silver bullet that would harvest those fish. The government can, can definitely be very, be very effective by not just putting all these hundreds of millions in something that we don't know what's going to be the end of it. But this year, it's reality. We have the platform. We're ready to go. He continues to bring awareness to what he believes is an untapped market and a perfect solution for an invasive species. This is what my dream, and I hope that that will, will happen one day, uh, especially with that, that Asian carp platform that we're building. Louisiana has got pretty much all the invasive species, simply because the climate and the water. We got them all, literally. So what I want to do one day is to open a, an invasive species research center for edibility not to try to eradicate, I'll leave that up to the science, but there is many that are edible, just like this Asian carp. And what this center will do, we will do the nutritional value of each invasive species. Actually, we're even working on the apple snail right now. Uh, develop recipes, develop marketing strategy, and we're gonna use what we have learned with the Nutria era, with the Asian carp era, to apply on each invasive species, because this, this is food. This is food, this is, this is economic impact that, that can be easily reached out if the process is done. So um, th that would be my, my dream, is to open a research center for invasive species, for edible invasive species, just to put on the food marketplace.
In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. And I have some right here. Oh, yeah. And you see, I want you to take a look at what this looks like. Now, we've taken the duck and made a beautiful salad with it. You can put a little dirty rice under this. You can put a little pasta on it if you want to. It doesn't, doesn't uh, really matter. You know, just let your, your preference uh, be your guide there. And I'll take a little bit of this dressing. Just kind of We almost drizzle, there. We drizzle, almost there. <laughs> drizzle over that duck like that. And, of course, on the... Solid oh, itself. Now, now you see, you might want to, you might want to take a piece of that. Well, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. <laughs> but fully cooked, beautiful, different presentation on game, and just get out of those humdrum recipes and start looking at some of these. These are really good ways to pr produce dough. You will be impressing your hunting buddies, trust me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory. Crispy. And a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Next week, coming up on Bayou Wild, we talk about ducks. Duck season is just about here. We hear from Larry Reynolds, who is the waterfowl study specialist with the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, also from Ducks Unlimited, and kind of preview what you're going to find out there in the marshes this coming season. Ducks Unlimited Canada has been conserving wetlands now for 80 years across the, the country. We focused on the prairies in the early years, and very early on in our history, we developed a very strong relationship with people in the state of Louisiana. Between the prairies of Canada and the wintering ground along the Gulf Coast, you have two of the most important areas for waterfowl on the continent. And the, the relationship that the birds have made coming back and forth has translated into interest both sides of the, the border uh, amongst the people who are interested in waterfowl and wetlands conservation. And always you can find us on YouTube, check out Bayou Wild TV, subscribe to our channel where you can see lots of bonus features as well as full episodes, and follow us on social media. We've got a Facebook page with frequent giveaways and an Instagram page also, Bayou Wild TV. And how do you get one of those neat Bayou Wild TV dry fit shirts? You can go to BayouWildTV.com, pick it up there. You can get a short sleeve if you don't want the tech shirt also.